All right. Good evening, everybody. It is 7.01 p.m. here in the Veterans Room. I call this Joint General Government Town Council Subcommittee meeting to order. Agenda item number two, roll call. Councilor Marchetti? Present. Councilor Steves? Present. Assistant Member Clements? Present. Assistant Member Shea? Present. And Councilor Ryan? Present. All members present. Agenda item number three, I haven't finished the meeting minutes yet from that meeting. I will have them for the next meeting. On May 12th, I think is the next scheduled meeting. No. Um, agenda item number four. Review the proposed job description for the IT director position and entertain a motion to recommend the town council for approval. So moved. Do I have second. A second. Second. All right. Um, the manager is still not in here. One second, everybody. The schedule that I have here for a salary it seems like it's cut off. Is that on purpose? Or? From, I don't know if that's cut off on purpose or just not by accident. That might have been an accident, I would think, because that doesn't. Okay. But I think on my computer, if I slid it over, there were right more yeah. numbers. <laughs> That's why I had my. That's like okay. keeping you awake? No, not keeping me awake anymore. <laughs> but his brother was over for two weeks. So. <laughs> Their brother. Yeah, yeah I know it's my, my, my paperwork doesn't have the two of them. That's essential, you know, that's my only question. I know yeah. that uh, Will Kanoya was the IT guy. He had a stipend to do this. But, um, I'm kind of in limbo at the moment. So. No, not all the IT stuff. I think there was certain. There's some of it being done. Not nice So, was well, Adriana here? Because you can ask her the question. Somewhere. She, yeah, they Sorry, both right. were here and then they're both gone now. Oh. So I have no idea what Because she's got the, she did the schedule, so you could ask that question. Oh, look. Okay. Can I borrow you for a second, Adriana? Okay. <laughs> uh -oh. sure. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. <laughs> You're not allowed to sit down. <laughs> Just because I can't find the manager. Oh, he's on his way down. He's around somewhere. He's on his way down. Okay. Uh, but we had a question about the schedule, Adriana. Yeah. Okay. Who you're asking if he's oh. Yeah. Get the meeting. Okay. Mr. Manager, hello. I don't know, but I'm in the middle of the meeting and I'd like to continue. <coughs> Everybody else settle? Okay. We are on agenda item number four, the IT director position. There has been a first and second, Mr. Manager. Yes, good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, okay. The position that we're asking the council to approve is a position to fill the vacancy that was created when Mr. Canoria left. As many of you know, um, Mr. Canoria wore several hats here. He was our assessor. He did IT, he did water sewer building. Uh, building. Um, IT has become a critical component of every business, every municipality these days. We do use um, specialized services in some of our other departments, police, fire, and we have looked, combined with the um, managed service provider that we use for our high level IT work, that we do need a person essentially boots on the ground that can handle the day to day working with peripherals and as well be a liaison between our various departments to this various software vendors. Um, it was becoming overwhelming, these are my words, not Mr. Canoyers, but um, when there's a question, say, from Munis with the IT folks, we've had to reboot a couple things recently or there's software upgrades. They need somebody in-house who can take over, run the administrative console. Um, if problems happen at the police fire, they use third-party consultants. The idea would be well, we would have one person being able to administer the whole system. Uh, for instance, and I don't want to put, uh, I know Ms. Haddock was here on the spot, 
Uh, I went up the other night when we had our MVP meeting, and I couldn't tell which Wi-Fi was for the town and for town employees. So the thought process would be is if we had one person, again, like we centralized HR, we would have a central IT person that everybody could rely upon. Uh, we have certain gear here in-house. We have a firewall. We could do some of that administration. That person would also oversee the setting up of PCs, new employees, part of the onboarding process. So they would also maintain the existing equipment in the building. Fortunately, we can knock on the wood. We haven't had any major service calls since Mr. Knoyer has left. We've been working. We have what's been, again, as I refer to as a managed service provider. Many towns do. They do remote maintenance of some of our larger servers. They oversee our Outlook 365 software. All of our employees do a lot of cloud-based, um, use a lot of cloud-based applications now. So for every new employee, we have an account with Microsoft. Uh, that is administered by our managed service provider. So some of these services could be transitioned back to that individual so that there could be a savings on what we're paying um, the managed service provider. So the idea is we need to at least replace the functionality that Mr. Knoyer did and bring in um, the, the duplication of effort in the, some of the outlying departments. Um, and we do think that it would be difficult to hire somebody or to take somebody currently in-house and pay them the stipend that Mr. Knoyer did, but get that expertise. He essentially grew into the position we, over the years as we, as our infrastructure for IT grew, he learned and adapted to it. To take somebody in-house right now and say, could you become our ID, IT director or, or manager, did not seem feasible. And given what we've seen looking at other communities, how they're trying to attract people and mm -hmm. uh, the salaries, we thought it would be best to consolidate all of our IT um, expenditures, put it into one position, and have that centralized uh, person. Okay. And the job description that we're presenting is one that we looked after, talking to other municipalities and reviewing theirs. I talked to some. IT people in other departments about what it would take and what we would have to put into a job description in order to get somebody to fulfill that role. All right. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Do I have questions from members of the committee? Councilor Marchetti. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for you. Um, so this person would be one centralized IT person through the whole town so that this person would handle the Police department, the fire department, EPW. So, would the fire department and the police department would they like eliminate IT people that work on their systems, or would they keep their? So, uh, we have both chiefs here right now, and I talked to, to each one of them about this as we were looking to do this. Right now, uh, the police chief he utilizes one of his officers. He pays him a stipend. He does some of the same work, similar in capacity to. Mr. Knoyer, he's still a regular police officer, but he also does some of the IT function. And then to supplement that, they use, uh, they have a line item for specialized services. They might use another consultant that handles uh, special needs for their IT. Um, similarly, I know the, the fire chief, I don't believe he has a dedicated person in the house. He may have somebody that can help from time to time, but nobody that is receiving a stipend. But you have an outside consultant. And so the idea would be to transition over um, learning from those consultants and then bringing in and also um, having a homogeneous set of um, software. Well, obviously they have different, they have their dispatch and things, but uh, making sure that we're using similar applications for Wi-Fi, similar applications, you know, for some of the basic needs that we have, so yes. So they would be able to eliminate the consultants? That's the goal, and that's how we were planning to fund this, by eliminating those um, specialized services um, for those individual departments. All right. And the library is, uh, I, know I saw this. Uh, oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Their IT is covered through the, the Mars, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, we have a network, and they actually provide um, a lot of services which we pay for, but um, I feel that uh, it is worth the, uh, 
the amount of money because they're the people who ultimately manage the whole system and we're dealing directly with them. So we have um, like PC upgrades and stuff like that and um, any of the security and stuff like that. So they take care of all that. And it's $75 per machine. So it's a deal. In, in, but it is in the description that that person would be required to travel to all those different facilities. So yeah. I did, I did mm -hmm. anticipated that that's what they'd be doing. And then the other question I have is, on my paperwork, this looks like it's cut off. I don't know if it's just if it, it's not cut off. Or it says from, is there a to? I don't know, it just looks like it's cut off. Um, I, maybe Ms. Rubina can be so He's asking about the salary mm -hmm. uh, lines in the mm -hmm. It is cut off. Madam Chair, I do have the schedule one if that would be helpful. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Oh, we have it on paper. Yeah, I have it right here. Do you want me to just pass it over so you could see it, or do you want me to make some copies? Or? Sure. Or you could just say it. Mm -hmm. Okay. How far did it go? It got cut off at from 72000 For which one? For every one of them. So from the A10, the IT? Yes. Mm -hmm. 73440 to 88250 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that's the range. So the 88250 that would be their final step or okay. Thank you. All right. Do does anyone else have any questions? Councilor Steve. To follow up on what Mike was just asking, um, do you have a um, a rough guesstimate of how much we how much in consultant costs that we can reduce by doing this? Will it actually pay for the entire job? We're close to it. I think we would cover at least 50% of it from what we have now. Mm -hmm. uh, my recollection, because I think the stipend was about $15,000 for uh, Mr. Kenoyer, roughly, and I think the specialized services and some of the stipends and the others were oh, between ten and $15,000 for each of the other two, right in that okay. part. So we would be covering a little more than 50% right now. Is there any, any consideration of having this person also handle IT for the schools? Um, I believe they we, have Well, we did there. have an initial conversation in meeting with Dr. Villar and Dr. We could, at the moment, we could, they couldn't take on, we talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, but there may be a way to share some resources once we get that person in, and maybe them being a backup for us. Uh, mm -hmm. Something along those lines. We did. We did have some preliminary discussion about that. Because I think it seems like that if if they are already doing some of their own IT work, um, and obviously I see our side, our the town side needs it too. Um, but it would be nice to see if we can honestly have the entire town and schools have one IT director actually handling everything that needs to get done, so we don't have a duplication. Uh, I think the, the, the only thing that yeah. comes into play, though, is sometimes I know in the last community I worked in, the town typically works Microsoft and PC based yep. world, and the schools would rely on Apple. True. In a lot of We're not Apple based. But We're, we are PC based. And some of Google, but there are different software. But Google, yes, and absolutely. And, and then different um, security requirements. So. There can be, like I said, shared resource, but sometimes the different, I'm, I didn't know everything we do here. No, some, it's some communities why I'm are, here. Yeah. <laughs> but there are differences, but there may be areas that we can work together. Mm -hmm. okay. Does anyone else have any further questions or comments? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Unanimous of all present. Agenda item number five, review the proposed job description for the DPW assistant engineering position and entertain a motion to recommend the town council for approval. So moved. Second. All right, Mr. Manager. So the, the job description that you have before you this evening is in part response to the discussions that we've had at various subcommittee as well as council meetings about oversight. So the 
the thought process here was we talked with our new HR director as well as the DPW director to come up with a position um, that would address some of the oversight issues and that is what's before you and I can let either one of them uh, elaborate. It's not my, necessarily my area of expertise, but if there are any specific questions about the, the job description itself, we we'll do they may be able to fill it. Um, did, did Heather, did you want to speak on it a little bit or? Um, sure. So over the past year, um, I've heard many times at council the desire to have additional inspector, uh, town inspector out in the field and um, doing inspections, especially during construction season. Although I've expressed that obviously this person can't be on every site all at the same time, there is a need for additional field right. pe a person out in the field to do um, to be checking more on the construction as they're going on and as especially our smaller construction jobs where we have road opening permits and things of that nature which are quite numerous. So um, I heard that, brought it to the town manager. Um, I think part of our concern was well what would this person do when there wasn't construction season as much and it wasn't um, as busy. But what we also have going on is we are, our requirements for our MS4 permitting are increasing greatly and there's a lot mm -hmm. of data to manage with that and a lot of programs that need to be started and, and additional field work even that needs to be done associated with the MS4 permit. And I said this would be the perfect time to marry the two together. You get a person who is very technically oriented and understands construction, but I was also very, you know, field oriented that might have some background and understanding, you know, how storm tours work and have them start implementing that program. Um, so this person's going to have to be a, a very savvy with data and data management, GIS, and being able to track that because it's that MS4 side of things is very data driven of what we have to do for reporting, mm -hmm. right. location driven, inspection driven. There's a lot of filling out the inspection forms and making sure that it gets logged in the right place. But it also has to be savvy of being a willing <laughs> to get down in the streams and rivers and go into some places for those and do that kind of um, hands-on field work. And also be savvy in the inspection services for during our construction, especially related to our street opening permits and our paving projects. Mm -hmm. So I saw this as getting another person to be able to really be very field-oriented. Okay. All right. Questions? Councillor Steves. I mean, I think it's definitely needed, and I, I read through the description. It just seems like, do you, from, from your experience, do you find that there are enough of, as enough of a pool of the, that combination of skills? I don't know until we try. Because it does seem like a really disparate group of skills mm -hmm. to do, to do the stormwater related stuff mm -hmm. and the road related stuff. And we need both, and I totally agree with that. Um, so are you aware of anybody who's been trying to, um, trying to advertise, other towns are trying to advertise for people that have this sim a similar skill base? I, I would refer that to Adriana. She was doing the research on that, and mm -hmm. I know she was looking at people that it's a lot of civil engineer positions yeah. opening right now, and it's similar to this position. Actually, it, it's very similar to this position. So I know we're not the only town. It's a very yeah. small group of, yeah. of candidates, but it's not impossible to find someone. Uh, we're just going to have to market it appropriately and do a, a outreach yeah. um, to um, get as most people as possible to look at the, the job posting. But I don't think it's impossible to get someone to fill this position. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to get some. I think it's doable. We, we can definitely hire someone for this role, but it's, it's not going to be a quick hire. It might take us some time just because it's a small pool of candidates. Right. That, and there are other towns that are hiring for the same position, looking for the same type of hire. Well, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I will say that there are many towns out there, especially on the stormwater right. side, yeah. looking to do exactly mm -hmm. what we're looking at. Right. So, um, has there been ever a consideration of doing like a joint stormwater person between multiple towns in the neighborhood? It just occurred to me, so. I, I haven't heard it mm -hmm. from any of our other towns. Our stormwater system is much bigger yeah. than any of the other neighboring towns around. Um, the systems that in the region are much smaller than ours. Um, so I don't know that it's as big of a 
cast in all of the towns mm -hmm. that it is going to be in ours. Right. So I, I, yeah, I don't. I think that as soon as we start getting into it and seeing more and more of what we're going to have to do, and as it grows, you're you're going to be looking at more and more personnel just for your stormwater. Which we've talked about a little bit before. That's not. That doesn't look like too much fun to me. <laughs> it's it, this is just a start. I mean, it, some of it is just going to be you know yeah. we talk about you know us technically our street sweeping is all related to stormwater. So yeah. it's just how you look at it. Our catch breaks, we're already doing a lot of stormwater stuff. Sure. It's just we are going to have to expand on what we're already doing. Right. right. Yeah, I get that. Is that counselor? Uh, at the moment, yeah. Anybody else, counselors? Um, okay. Uh, thank you. Through you. Um, I would ask that we take this off uh, consideration tonight, uh, mainly because I think because of the transition, we're, we're going to have a new uh, DPW director. I think it's something that uh, we already have two engineers. To add a third engineer, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, we, the subcommittee last night, the DPW subcommittee last night, uh, agreed that we do need someone to be a, like a clerk of the works but not necessarily an engineer. And I think the concern is that if you hire an engineer, then I think they're going to hit a classification where then they're going to, you're going to be adding to their salary and it'll no longer be a $70,000, it will be like a $90,000 salary range. So since we already have two engineers for the town, and the next uh, DPW director will probably be an engineer. Having someone who could oversee the roads is one thing, but having a, someone on, on the town uh, at DPW who's an engineer, I think we're going to run into uh, a lot of costs for that. So that's why I would ask that this be uh, at least postponed for now. Councilor Seeds? Um, I would argue that if we're doing this and we and this person is doing the job effectively, we could actually reduce costs by not being able to have to do some of the, co the contracted oversight that we are now doing. That's the whole point of doing this, is that right now we're paying for lengthy contracts with the engineers, outside engineering firms to oversee these projects, which we voted on a couple of, like a month and a half back, to extend some of these contracts to give them full-time oversight. And those extensions actually, if I remember, I don't remember exactly what the numbers were, but we did a couple of them and they were they added up to more than what this person would be making. If I remember correctly. I can't remember what the figure exactly was, but it's more than Got it. Got it. Got it. You're finished. Um since so Amendment Clemens, then Council Marquette. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um so I have not attended DPW meetings, but I had heard that this was coming down the pike, read this information, was quite shocked at the amount of essential functions. Yeah. Because um, if anybody reads this, I would have to then say, well, what's the other two engineers doing? Um, just because there's just so much here. Uh, I don't disagree in part with what Councillor Marchetti's saying either. I mean, we have two engineers. Is it engineers we need or is it oversight? Is it other people who have experience in road construction and various components of the job versus engineers? Can our two in-house engineers handle the MS4 stuff and somebody who's not necessarily an engineer but has lots of other DPW experiences and, and such or, or other construction type experience be enough for us? Does it have to be an engineer? That being said, I'm kind of shocked at the salary as being what it is looking at the IT director's salary, which I wanted to mention, I just kind of let it go until we got to here, being as high as that is compared to what you expect this engineer at 67000 to be doing here. Which, <laughs> which begs the question, what is our assistant and our DPW director now, what is his salary up to? Because I didn't have the budget in front of me to look at that um, when I, I didn't have the whole budget book. So I, I wasn't sure, um, just in comparison for my own knowledge. Mm -hmm. Uh, where, is, where is he up to, and we know, you know, and what's our next DPW director, you know, what's the ad going to look like for that in terms of what we're putting out there for getting a qualified DPW director with an engineering degree. Um, those are all questions that sort of are entangled amongst each other when it comes to funding the position or fund, and the need. 
And I would have to say that while well, Councillor Steve said uh, this is a person that we need because we're spending all this money on oversight, you're absolutely right. We spend an awful lot of money on supervisor oversight and we get a mess like on Main Street. Um, and we wonder what happened to that. And I don't think our problem is that we're not spending enough on supervisor oversight or whatever they call site managers or whatever they call it in the contract. The problem we have is our enforcing what they didn't do and leaving us in a mess. I think that's part of the problem we've had all along is when we have something like the, the Center Street parking lot that has cracked sidewalks within the first year or so and it's brought to people's attention and, you know, did it get fixed? Have they been fixed? I'm not really sure. i got to go look again. But um, so it's not so much, you know, we have these people that are hired through our, through our contracts to do the oversight, then they do their job wrong, and then we don't make anybody accountable. So that's an in-house problem. So hopefully we have somebody who, who can make those people accountable. I just beg to differ that this one person, this one $67,000 person who has everything on their plate here, I'm not sure what's left, uh, is not going to get to do all this. If you've got four projects going on, how accurate are they going to be for oversight to every single project? It was even the DPW director just said that, that they can't be at every project mm -hmm. in making sure that every single thing is done. At the end of the day, when the construction stops, did that person get a chance to look at, at the work that was done for that day before the next work starts and that the first day was wrong and then it just gets worse as it. So there's a lot of things to consider in this position or in, in our makeup, in our DPW makeup. Do we have what we need? administratively, oversight-wise, and all in general in the DPW at this point, with changing of the DPW director and all, do we actually, do we have what we need and are we using our the taxpayers' money wisely in paying for these positions? I don't know. Well, that's, that's an issue that we've been talking about off and on for like the last two or even three years now. Mm -hmm. Probably longer than mm -hmm. that, but Police nothing gets fire done fire about it, so I'm just saying it because I'm here to focus on it. We, we do has not had the focus of this. We do have a line of people, so if we can just try to keep it to mm -hmm. whoever has the floor, please. <coughs> uh, I'm good for now. That's okay. oh, I think I said a lot. Okay, thank you, Council Marchetti. I'm going to yield so a lot of people can talk. Go ahead, then. Thank you. Could you just identify yourself for the record, please? Derek Julian, says a member of PPP, 331 High Street. So I am one of the gentlemen that proposed that we needed oversight. I've spoken with Heather, I've spoken with the town manager, I've spoken at the DPW subcommittee meetings. Um, <coughs> an assistant engineer is not what we need because I know in past precedents, past precedents that's happened in this town is that you hire somebody with a specific title and when they get past their grace period, oh, they're out of their range of pay now. So now we have to give them a raise. This, this job description does not need to have an engineer. This job description only requires somebody that has had multiple years experience with roads and drainage. The water and sewer, they inspect their own. I do work in this town. The water department inspects their own water connections. The sewer department inspects their, inspects their own connections. Why are we taking that away from them? Why are we throwing it on somebody else? They do it now, why can't they keep doing it? The other jobs that are in here, I agree with. We don't need somebody that has the title of engineer. Uh, someone with a uh, construction background, like myself, or there's a few others in this room that have it. And they have multiple years in it. They could do all of these things. Maybe not the AutoCAD software as fluent as somebody else that has the experience in that, but that's something you learn. Or the other engineer does. This, this <clears throat> title just can't be. And you don't have to, I mean, the pay rate is, is in the ballpark. It really is. It is. It doesn't need to be higher. Um, but this title just, I see false things happening with this all the way. Just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other comments or questions from people? Just as a can I say um, so the, I don't I think the number you're correct the bulk the number of the salary for someone to do this jobs looks right but not as an engineer not an engineer you know but I do agree that for for what's being required that's not a bad number it's just as an engineer they're gonna want more, they're gonna want more the, the title is gonna bring in more and just what it is right. Heather Martina then Goss <laughs> 
No, no, Cal succeeds, excuse me. Okay. I... I just want to say, I don't believe this person has to be an engineer. I think this person could be an, a, an engineer. I think this could person that could be somebody that is very familiar with doing construction, has been in the construction field, and has done some type of oversight type reporting and has familiarity with drainage. I think the reason, just to, I don't want to, I'm not going to nitpick in this thing, but I think the reason the water and sewer connections are included in here is that the water and sewer department inspect their own connections, but they don't inspect the paving job afterwards. So they will still be a person who is, we're doing the road opening permits, someone still has to go back and inspect the paving. Okay, but that says the connections. At, at, it, it was meant to be the paving after the connections. In, in That's the understandable. Okay, so, just just as a aside, so I too think you could find someone who has years of experience that maybe is very technical related and maybe doesn't have an engineering degree. I know plenty of people that have been in construction and are extremely knowledgeable and can do this. I also know special plenty of engineers that are clerk of the works. So just to say you need a clerk of the works, most big clerk of the works are engineers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's where you get I'm, I think there's some mixed signals mm -hmm. of there um, you know there are different types of engineers field inspecting engineers people that have been in the field and running construction jobs and big construction jobs there's a lot of engineers that do that and there's a lot of job superintendents that aren't engineers mm -hmm. that have done that but it's that's why maybe we need to make it a little more generalized and maybe we can reach a wider pool of people the Such as an oversight, some just well, some yeah, just some, right. So okay. I just don't, yeah, I just don't know. You have somebody <coughs> doing oversight, you're not going to have a lot of winter work. So that was part of the idea was to do some of the semis for work in the winter. Mm -hmm. okay. If that said, assistant to the resident engineer, that wouldn't be bad, but it just can't give that guy the title engineer mm -hmm. because that just opens the door for. Okay. All right, construction oversight. Well, well, I, I need a, I need a, no, I don't think, uh, Martina and then Councilor Steves. Yes, sir. Let Councilor Steves go first. Okay. I think my question is more second. Okay, okay. Um, well, my observation is, I just think a couple of things. First of all, if, if we were going to do that more general kind of a description, um, uh, in the, 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 the job description refers to a field resident engineer. It refers to bachelor's degree in civil engineering or related field is desired, related engineering experience and design, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's, I mean, it refers to engineering all over the place. And what do you, I guess this is through to either Heather or the manager or both, or, or you, um, where, <coughs> How would you how would you rephrase it in such a way that we get the the kind of coverage that we we need to have? Why don't we just why don't we just postpone it? And the professionalism so that we need to we have without because we because we need to get this done, and uh, we keep we keep right? we keep kicking the can down the road with some of these things, and we keep it keep costing us on various projects, and and the, we've been talking about upgrading. The capacities of DPW for years now, and it keeps getting piecemealed. We need to stop doing that and start giving the, the DPW the capacities that it needs to have. I think that if the uh, committee we keep dilly dallying. Okay. 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 So, Mr. Julian, Councillor Adams. I did have a, I did have a question. Oh, you do have a question. Okay. Well, that was the question. Is what 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 should this be? in such a way that, that it makes sure that we get the, the requirements and the qualities that we need this person to have to do the jobs that we need this person to have. Okay. Do Heather or the Mr. Manager, since the question was directed to you, do you have an answer to that? Given the discussion that we've been sure. having. I confess I don't have much to add to, to in the way of a response. I mean, we were trying to be responsive to everything that we heard at some mm -hmm. committee and the council. And, and I so appreciate that. I've had experience in many different things, but road work and civil engineering is not my forte. Right. So 
So I did talk to Ms. Blakely about, you know, and Ms. Rubena about could we create something that would cover this. Right. And so this essentially is our first stab at this to present something to you and put something into the budget to address this. Mm -hmm. So I would have to defer to Ms. Blakely with her background and expertise as to how we would tailor this to satisfy what everybody's talking here. I can't. Okay. I guess right. I don't understand how what you just said doesn't already say what I just said. Because I it says bachelor's degree in engineering or related field is desired. So it's related not required, it's desired. It's desired and it says related field or it or and maybe we should say and or construction experience. Um, I it's it's not required, it's desired. It's basically saying we want somebody who's been out there either designing or constructing their out in the field for mm -hmm. three to eight years actually doing hands-on stuff. That's what that's saying to me. Well, that does say specific design and construction of public yeah. works. There was a requirement yeah. that the job description would say as required, but yeah. it's desired or preferred. That d doesn't necessarily mean that we wouldn't consider someone that has the experience. Right. And it says, or equivalent combination of education, training, and experience. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to put the word Construction experience in there somewhere. I I guess that could yeah. be an adder. Well, kind of kind That's of the only thing I could add to it. I guess is what I'm saying. Because I think it is general. I think it is trying to open. It's trying to find somebody who has field-related experience. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, it's right. because it's coming to this subcommittee, not ours. Okay. So I will now go to Mr. Mr. Julian, and then Ms. Shea, and then Ms. Clements. And the, oh yes, I'm sorry, Councillor Adams. That's all right. I'll wait till last. I'm just okay. I'm sorry. There's a lot of hands and a lot of discussion. If we can try to keep the sidebar discussions to a minimum and not talk over each other, it'd be really helpful. Okay. Just one thing that I want to say before I forget. The way Mass DOT does it is you have a CE1, a CE2, a CE3 civil engineers. Underneath them, they have their gentlemen that they send out. They call uh, GCIs, the General Construction Inspectors. They're not engineers. They don't get paid the big dollars like the engineers do, but that's where Mass DOT does it. They have multiple people underneath their uh, civil engineers that go out and do the inspections for them while the engineers are in the house doing what they need to do for plans and everything else. All right, thank you. Ms. Shea. Um, Councilor Marchetti suggested that we, as Councilor, Gus said it, we kicked this down the road. It, we're talking about the budget number right now. And I understand we have to have a job description to go with the budget number, but if we don't put the budget number in now, um, June 1st is going to come real, real fast. No, this is no budget to be no, hold on. To we be, voted the budget number this, last, last yeah. night. We vote, okay, hold so on. the budget number's okay. The title, please the title do not speak language. unless you are recognized, please. I've said that multiple times, please. Yes, we're talking about the job description at this point, okay. not the budget number. All that right. is the agenda item we are talking yeah. about. All right, I'm clear now. Okay. Thank you. Citizen Member Clements. Thanks. Yes, I was going to say you, you have the number. It's mm. not the number, it's the issue here. Mm. So obviously title is, you can't say assistant engineer if that's not what you're really looking for. If you're looking for something else that doesn't necessarily be an engineer, you do have to at least change that. And there are some things, one thing that jumps out, the three to eight years, that's a really wide, uh, I would imagine in this type of job, you would want somebody probably a minimum of five years. I mean, I three years of construction is not much. Anybody could say they worked three years with, as a, you know, an apprentice to somebody, and that's just not a whole lot when it comes to what you're asking them to do here. Because they could sell you good in their, their interview, and it might look right. But um, I, I would prefer that the years be different, but that's just, again, my, my preference preference and I'm not the professional here to decide that because uh, you can still also have a bachelor's degree in something and still without that experience the piece of paper just means you did your test really good um, and you didn't actually have the experience so it would be nice to see that it's not that it's a little that you know maybe it's five to eight or something like that over five or whatever something more to the long longer side than the shorter side because that's what really gets you in this industry is the time you've spent on the sure. job. Sure. Uh, I know some super, super highly paid professional people work in Connecticut, actually down there for construction companies that never went to college and 
are top in their field mm -hmm. and they're not engineers at all and they get paid really big money. Um, but I'm just, and they do all the road work stuff. But uh, so I'm just saying it is about the experience more so than just about anything else. Mm -hmm. You do need, you do need, you know, you do need to know something going into this, yeah. but um, the experience is what's going to, it's going to help this town. I think, I think that's that. more experience is going to help Southbridge. So I think, I don't think waiting a week or, you know, getting it tightened up and bringing it back one time to the, to whatever it is, or getting it to the, getting it to the members as soon as possible, even if a meeting isn't for two weeks, get, get it so everybody can digest it. Ask mm -hmm. questions. People, nothing per, ever uh, tells a, a member of a committee or any other counselor that they can't, you know, question something prior to a meeting right. so that the person who's presenting this has the ability to come prepared, come with those questions already even answered perhaps. So, you know, maybe they can get it out sooner and there's there's plenty of time for somebody to just say, hey, did you consider something? And maybe they won't change a thing, but they'll come with the finalized document and that might be what you accept. Right. Just a suggestion, I think it, it would be um, prudent to get it right and not to keep trying to figure it out as we talk like this. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. <clears throat> okay, that makes sense. All right. Councillor Adams and Councillor Marchetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just I, I appreciate them putting the great words in there. They're not black and white. Um, I, I don't see a need to continue to delay this. They can work on a little bit and tighten it up just a little bit or whatever they may be based on some of the recommendations that are in here. Bring it to the town council. I believe it's on May 9th and let the town council make that decision. Obviously, the JGov can come up with a rec negative recommendation, but that's that would be up to the vote here. But I, if, if you want to get a word, rid of the word engineer because you don't like that word, fine. I, I don't care. But if it's somebody that's able to look at the construction, the multiple construction sites that we have going on, is <coughs> able to feasibly and educationally take care of the problem and supervise um, the, the works that are happening, you know, great. But in here it specifically states requirements. And requirements are big gray words in there. And that's good. We do that with the town manager's job, fire chief's job, a uh, few other jobs around here. And, and I don't understand why we, the perfection it's all in the eye of the beholder. So at this point in time, I say recommend move it up to the town council, even if it's a negative recommendation, let the staff work it out, maybe ask some questions from some of the counselors and citizen members here or residents that are giving recommendations and tighten it up a little bit and see if we can work this thing out at the town council meeting. It's not that difficult. We can do two things at once. Thank you. Um, I will. I'm, the only thing that I, I will say, we could get the, there's still time and we have a meeting scheduled before the budget is to be adopted and before all these final numbers are supposed to be accepted too. So we still have some time to really beat out the, have one more meeting. We have a meeting scheduled on May 12th down here. So we could have that debate down here, again, with the final description that this committee might be more comfortable with and then move it up to the May 23rd meeting. And we can just have it on the May 23rd meeting agenda as well. Would that also work? That's it. I'll make a motion to postpone until the description is to the, is is a little more accurate. Okay. I have a second. All right. I have a motion and a second. Are there any further discussions on the motion and second to postpone? Seeing none. All those in favor? All those opposed? Record is four to one. The meeting, the motion is post. Um, the agenda item is postponed until. Madam Chair. I was just going to ask, but I'm sure if I could just say, if there were people, in, I, I do have Mr. Julian's email address, awesome. I know, Mr. Um, Julian, yeah, we'll you've we'll expressed some. If those folks who had some suggestions this evening want to send them to me or Ms. Rubena, um, we can try and incorporate that and, and work with Ms. Blake to, uh, to address what was discussed this evening. Thank you. I have my hand up, but that's, that's Full disclosure, I'm out of town on the 12th I don't know. Okay. But I will, I would like, if I could see it, I will give <coughs> my comments. Well, we can do it uh, hybrid now. Hmm. We can do hybrid. Well, I've done that before I call in on my You're good. You can do it. You can have that. a discussion. Um, I, all right. I, I will break into my vacation to do that. <laughs> all right. So we will now move on to agenda item number six. Review and discuss the addition of grade A10 
to salary schedule one for the IT director position and entertain a motion to recommend the town council for approval. Second. All right. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is just the scheduled salary for the job description we just recommended to bring up to council. Is there any further discussion on the on this? I mean, it's just a quick question on um, what your thoughts were in terms of why you why you gave this, this particular job this salary. That I can defer a little bit to Ms. Ravena, but I did take some time to speak to some towns around us to see what they were paying yeah. for, not necessarily, um, we call this an IT director, but we're not, it's not the same level as some other towns are paying over six figures. Mm -hmm. This would be our director here, but not a, a true network administrator. It's going to be somebody who has to have um, experience, but also help desk. Um, but that seemed to be the going rate when I talked uh, to our peers, and I don't know, I, we did monitor a lot of the other job openings that are out there across the Commonwealth. As I've said before, there are an awful lot of jobs in municipal government right now. So we we looked, you know, they, they run the gamut, you know, if you're closer to Boston, they may be paying higher, but we, we spoke to, I spoke to Southboro, I spoke to Webster, I spoke to a couple of people just to get some ideas. Um, what, what something commensurate to attract somebody with that skill level here. So okay. I did that on my own, and I know Ms. Rubin did so much more. Okay. Is, that, is that the normal rate for an IT director, a normal range for the IT director based on kind of HR practices? It's kind of midpoint. Um, there, as, as a town manager mentioned, as you go to the cities, they're higher. Obviously, it's a yeah. bigger budget, so they're paying more. I actually have a spreadsheet. I did a salary survey just to make sure that we were aligned or competitive enough, at least with our surrounding towns, and we are. Okay. Um, I can provide that with, with that information. And if you have any questions uh, prior to the meeting that you want to ask me, please send me an email, okay. and I can have time to prepare and respond. Okay. Thank you. Right. Do I have any other further questions or comments on this? Seeing none, all those in favor? All those opposed? Unanimous of all present. I recommend that we postpone agenda item number seven till the updated job description for the DPW assistant engineer being position is finished. So moved. Second. Second. Do I have any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? All those opposed? It is postponed. All right, the big item, agenda item number eight. Review the town manager's five-year capital plan fiscal year 23 through 28 and entertain a motion to submit to town council as presented. Do we have a second? Second. Um, I figured we would go through by fiscal year 23 and go by section. Yeah. I figured that would be the easiest way to go through this. And if people have questions on that particular section, you raise your hand, OK? Mm -hmm. Mr. Manager? Uh, Madam Chair, if I could, by way of brief introduction. So we've tried a different format this year. Well, we didn't have an explicit discussion about the exact format. Um, Council Marchetti had an ad hoc subcommittee with regard to capital planning. We met several times and we looked at um, certain requirements for the capital plan, what other towns were doing, um, including some other formats. The, the sheet that each department submits, uh, we looked at what some other towns were doing, so I tried to model it after some of the things we looked at in that committee. And the overall format so that we could try and get it on one page rather than the, the format that was used previously. Um, this format that I used here for this year, I mean, obviously it's our first year, we can we can play with it. I originally tried to put in some of the prior year's expenses so that we could see. Um, I took that out because it became rather cumbersome. But what I did at the top to make it readable was to put category codes, what the nature of, of the the item was. So in your left hand, immediate left hand, you see CC, that's category code. So it's broken down by whether it's facility construction, facility renovation, parks, open space, um, infrastructure vehicles, and miscellaneous. Similarly, next to each fiscal year column, you have the amount that's been requested, and then you have a funding source, which is the revenue code uh, for property tax, general fund, state or federal aid, um, sale of land, a pilot, water sewer bond, other retained earnings, special revenue, capital stabilization, 
um, building maintenance, and we put a placeholder for ARPA. Now, I would say the one caveat, and we'll get to when we get down um, into the DPW. When we started, I sent out capital requests back in September, and it asked people to update them all along. We started to incorporate them. At that point in time, we were operating under the federal interim rule with regard to how ARPA was being spent. And the primary focus of the interim rule was solely on infrastructure. So we did put a lot of ARPA funds into some of these um, categories. Now, as you may know, or many of you may know, the council has an ad hoc committee looking at how to use the ARPA in light of the new final rule, which gives us broader discretion on how to use these funds. So as we go through, we may have to modify the funding sources where some of these were ARPA. If we're going to use ARPA for, for other community needs now, we may have to change these to be water sewer bond or perhaps stabilization. So given the limitations of the version of Excel that we have, if there's a single funding code. At the very last page, you will see um, there are totals. And the grand totals will tell you how much was requested. And you have then a grand total by allocation, which each section, general government, police, it'll tell you what the total um, amount was requested. Grand total by source will tell you what, what um, funding source is being utilized. So essentially in fiscal year, there was $27 million in requests, but we're only going to be funded. We put funding sources for the $19 million. In the interest of time, as we were trying to get this new format in, we didn't come up with three separate um, capital budgets. So I did break out water and sewer enterprise at the bottom. So the number represents, before we had three separate sections. This is a, a combined capital budget um, where you have the four. Again, it's a work in progress. I was trying to be responsive again to the, the, the council as well as the subcommittee's request for something that was a little more readable. So um, I would just respectfully request your patience and indulgence as we go through this and we can make corrections as we talk about the other. Um, I did show this to Council Marchetti, this proposed format when right before we started finalizing the capital budget. So again, work in progress. Um, welcome to any input. Um, and we're trying to make it so that it's much more readable and clear where the money's going and all on one page as opposed to several pages out and several pages down. All right. Thank you for that, Mr. Manager. If we're all ready, I figure we'll just go through by subsection and we'll start with the town hall subsection. Does any members of the committee or the public have questions or comments about the town hall section of the capital budget? Councillor Steves. Thank you. Um, two quick things. One is that I'm aware of, in the past I've mentioned about the idea of the potential of looking for historical commission grants to do town hall renovations. Um, have, has that gone anywhere? Um, as time permits, I have started to try to look into that um, because when we are on a, I believe, the Massachusetts Historic Register for this building because of the, the, the nature of it. So I have tried to look into it. Um, I don't have anything to report to you for this fiscal year. Okay. Uh, um, and also, the list I noticed doesn't include the windows. I know okay. that's been an issue, too. So I, what I did was I ported over a lot of the requests from the previous mm -hmm. format into this. And so whatever was in the future, the last year's FY23 came in. Um, the windows, it may have been an oversight on my part. I know that we do need to address some of the windows, especially the plexiglass up there. Um, and I incorporated any new items in it. Okay. I don't know, like a lot of these windows are in kind of tough shape, so. Kind of mm -hmm. Plexiglass. Yes. Any, <laughs> right. any other, do you have any other questions? Anybody, Councilor Marchetti. Uh, thank you, through you. Uh, so the communications center tower, um, $100,000. So is that the tower across the street, or where exactly is that? So that, so is that fall into town hall? No. No, then that's, that's not info. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it says general government. I thought that's what we were No, on. I'm doing it by subsection, oh, so okay. in case there's. Okay, then I'll, I'll hold off on that. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah. All right. Any other questions about town hall? Seeing none, we'll move on to information technology. Oh, wait, you have another one? Yeah, I, I thought it's listed as FY24. Yeah. I was curious about it because it looks like you're talking okay. about doing architectural design of interiors and basement, and then it jumps down to, arc to FY24, 1.5 million for updating use of the basement and reconfiguration of space. Um, just what are your thoughts on that? I mean, we do have a bunch of space and that it's not even being used. <coughs> Um, one thing, you know, we do have certain needs for storage. I can tell you when we created the new office space, we, we are running out of storage space. We're required to retain a lot of municipal documents. Yeah, um, sure. We, we have more coming in the building. One of the things, uh, I'm not, a, again, professional by any means, but all one has to do is walk into some of that area and the damp, we're going to have to do something about that. So. Mm -hmm. I, that number was one that I carried forward, but I think we should take some time, investigate that. Um, you know, Ms. Blakely is leaving. Perhaps we'll, we can task that new person he or she who comes in mm -hmm. um, with helping to come up with a plan to util better utilize that space. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not used for town hall employees, perhaps it can be other meeting space for community uh, organizations. But I do think it's not a ideal, ideal location at the moment for some of our paper documents. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, I was surprised I, I went on a tour, I want to say one with Mr. Pelletier, and I think one with Mr. Knoyer. There are a lot more documents down there than, than I was aware of in other sections. Right. And one of the other town halls I worked in, they, they put a lot of money into climate control. Mm -hmm. um, dehumidifying and things to pre preserve because we have a lot of um, historically significant documents here in the town hall. We want to ensure that anything that may be down there is not compromised. So sure. I do think it's a, uh, something worthwhile. I don't know if one point five million dollars. I haven't looked that far. I, I, I will be honest with you. I reported that in the All right. Seeing no further discussion on town hall, information technology, Councillor Marquette, I know you have a question on this. Yeah, I just was asking about the communications center tower. That was that when we discussed at the uh, opera meeting, and I put an official request in for the police station yeah, to be upgraded exactly with a cellular, yeah. uh, not cellular, excuse me, a radio communications tower to be attached to the side of the building. That was a rough estimated cost of $100,000, mm -hmm. and I see it's, it's opera funded. I had to blow mine up on the phone and see it. Isn't that in the back of the book? Yes, it is. It's, it's one of the proposals in the back of Council Market. It's not a Harper one. No, no. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not. It's listed as it would be coming out of the property. Out of the free cash or property tax. Property tax free cash. Yeah. 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 Ye
ability to still perform. Um, it's stainless steel. The state doesn't want to, uh, not stainless steel, it's regular steel. The state doesn't want to prove regular steel anymore because it delaminates um, and it, it loses its accuracy. Also, you get contaminants in the product. Mm -hmm. So the price of this thing is actually going to be closer to 40000 I got a quote of 35, but next year I'm, I'm given a, a possible increase. Um, I will be back next year with a request for this because we do need it, but um, I am not prepared to give you a full package right now. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pelletier. Mm -hmm. So that we will um, have that repacked back to council. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, well, thank you. Um, all right. One quick question. Yes. Um, we're we're writing blighted billings. I know we're not. We don't have a line item for this year. Mm -hmm. But how much do we currently have in that account? That would have to defer to Karen on that. Yes, Karen. Sure. And what is that? On the blighted buildings account? How much do we have in there? Um, I don't. I know it's come out, It comes up every once in a while. So there's there's less than five hundred thousand, I believe. But we still have a significant amount. We'll get through this year with it easy enough. Um, we will probably get through a couple of years easy enough. If I take down two buildings a year at eighty to one hundred thousand per building, we should be able to go through this year. I have two on target, mm -hmm. and um, next year I'll target two others, and I'll try to get the others. Anything else on receivership that we can get okay. worth running through. All right. Good. Thanks. Thank you. All right. We will now. Any other questions for inspections? Seeing none, we'll move on to miscellaneous buildings. We will, anybody have any questions about that, Council Marchetti? Thank you, through you, the animal kennel. Um, this has been, I thought we had this ready to go last year, so I don't understand why it's not again this year. I, could, I don't know why this 250,000 is in the capital plan. That's me. Oh, you put that I put it in existing. That, well, yeah, because yeah. the Bay Path, then that's my misunderstanding, because I knew it was on the previous year, we didn't get it done with Bay Path, so I was carrying it forward as a project that was yet to be completed. And I put it in because we were going to do it primarily with donations and things. That's what okay. I put it in. Because I was I didn't know my mistake. Well, it's my mistake too. We, so, but we do talk about the dog kennel all the time. So uh, <laughs> we're trying to get McClure Engineering to get her. Well, and if I could, Madam Chair, we have an email thread going on now for about eight months between the town manager, the DPW director, and myself, and the engineering company. We've never experienced anything like it. They're going to get back to us. They give us dates. We give them deadlines. They're going to get back to us. This has been going on since last year. You're right, Council Marquette. So at this point, you know, we were promised by April, I think it was 26, yeah. uh, we were going to have a final design to put it out the bid, get it ready for the summer, and here we are today. What's today? So it's two days past the, the due date. We've heard nothing. That, that's why I carried it. Yeah. Okay. Did you pay the engineer for that? But I would suggest that we, no. we convene and no. we can discuss that, that further about possibly going another direction. But it's just, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Oh, if it was my understanding, so it was all Bay Path. That's what we had to look at for their programming. Mm -hmm. It was Bay Path in its entirety. Okay. Yeah, sure. sure. Right. So uh, we're not paying out of our free cash, so there's no need for it to be on the capital budget, right? Or out of. Well, well, geez, just to show that we're doing no. capital projects. Because um, we're not funding, it's already been funded, right? Uh, we have donations. We have a substantial amount, probably about 250000 in donations and other. Okay. This council has voted in the past that that'll take money yeah. for capital projects that's just sitting and has not been spent yet. So I don't, I'm not sure if this needs to be on there. Or if you can tell me. All right. Again, experimental, and some towns want to track all their projects, mm -hmm. even ones mm -hmm. that are paid for by donations. So they put it on. If we don't want to do that going forward, that's fine. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's a bad explained. idea. Yeah, no, as long as it's explained that we're not, we don't have to find it. So it doesn't it disappear from yeah. people's well, that's minds. True. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And it says G, it says other, so yeah. it's not coming out of anybody's. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd like to see it get built, though. I think it would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do we have any other questions on um, miscellaneous buildings? Seeing none, we move on to police. Do we have any questions or comments about the police capital budget? Councilor Marchetti. So you need two patrol cars again this year? Correct. Is there something mm -hmm. wrong with the other ones? No, uh, for you, Madam Chair, what we do is we get rid of the two oldest cars in the fleet. Right now we have two that are a little bit over 100,000 on each. So we cycle them out, they go to the junkyard, we bring two new cars and we do whatever we have. 
So there's something wrong with them, or just a, a police vehicle should not be driven on patrol every day at more than 100,000 miles. Mm -hmm. It's a standard in the industry. We're trying to go to hybrids, save gas cost, fuel cost, the longness of these vehicles would be. Um, and these vehicles, since we're talking about them, I was told two days ago by Ford, there's about a 30 week, we're about 30 weeks out on these. Mm -hmm. If we ordered them July 1st, it'd be 30 weeks till we get these forward interceptors. So the pictures that you have, just for a point of clarification, I'm going to get whatever we can get to put them in the fleet. So it might be a Dodge Durango, it might be a Ford SUV, but it's going to be two vehicles going in the fleet, whichever I can get first. If we go with the standard that you're looking at now in front of you, it's going to be 30 weeks from July 1st. So we wouldn't have them for more than a year, or almost a year, I should say. But if I can get some other type of interceptor vehicle to go into our fleet sooner than that, that's the direction I'd like to know. So it won't necessarily be a hybrid? I'm, I'm going to work than I can to get a hybrid right now, being told 30 weeks out. Right. Not, not only that, Carl, just another point of clarification, either. Hybrid or regular gas, they're both 30 weeks out. Okay. And everybody blames the pandemic. <laughs> that's so now. So I, I <laughs> um, exactly. All right, so uh, System Emma Clements. Thanks. Uh, so in your description, it lists them out as the funding request of 60000 each, mm -hmm. and here the funding request is 130000 yeah. And in your description, it says that you're applying for grants of 5000 in savings for the purchase of each hybrid. That could result in 15, which doesn't make sense if it's two cars. That'd be 10,000. Um, but if I had five and five. Uh, so, what's the number? Is it 130? Is it 120? Is it. I, I don't know. The documents I have in front of me is one, it's 130,000. So it'd be 60 for the car, and give or take for the equipment, the uh, mobile data terminal needs to go in, the mount, the rifle rack, just other equipment that doesn't come with the vehicle, the radio. So, so, a completely upfit car, a cruiser is 65,000. If it's a hybrid, and I don't know what you're not understanding, but we get $5,000 back from the car for $10,000 for both on a state grant for hybrid vehicles, if it's a hybrid. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to get our hands on a hybrid within another year. So, Chief, what I'm saying is in the paperwork, it, you're requesting $130,000 yes. according to this. In the description you sent to us, or somebody did, page, I don't know, in the back of the book, it just says estimated funding request is sixty. Mm -hmm. and that you were going for a 5000 in savings. I'm just asking the bottom line. Is it 60 plus 60, which is 120, or is it some other number? That's all. 65 plus 65. Okay, that's just not what the paper said. That's all I'm saying. I was just My trying to clarify. So, yes, that's why I'm asking. It wasn't fictitious. <laughs> Thank you. All right. It's Mr. Manager. I just wanted to add to the conversation earlier about the vehicles. Uh, I've been in charge of fleet maintenance in other, um, or oversight in other past positions. And I will say, when I work with police and fire vehicles, especially police vehicles, a lot of people say 100,000, that seems awfully low because, you know, you, a lot of cars, especially small, Hyundais, Toyotas, uh, Hondas, you get 150,000 easily. It's not always what's on the odometer, there's actually a separate reading that monitors engine hours because a lot of times these cars are running 24-7, 365. So it may have 100,000 on it, but there's a, a, a factor that you multiply by the engine hour, and they could actually have the equivalent of 300,000 or, or more on them. And really what happens is at that point in time, they tend to break down. And I've seen this in other police departments. They get rid of them right around this time because usually you have uh, catastrophic failures with your water pumps, uh, you start throwing a rod and ruin an engine, and then it becomes a maintenance nightmare. So it's not unusual for them to trade them out at about 100,000 and what's on the, from the chief has to say. Just to, again, not to regurgitate, but it's 300,000 miles engine wear. Mm -hmm. What we're at right now with the two vehicles and our fleet at 100,000, it's 300,000. For every 100,000 miles, it's 300,000 miles on the engine because they're run, they're operating 24 7. So that's just to articulate that. Mm -hmm. uh, Chief, if I may, if you don't get the hybrids, do you expect that this number could go down? Because I know that gas, the I realize all cars are expensive now. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, but is there a chance that that could go down if you end up with the, the gas powered vehicle? The difference uh, through you, Madam Chair, is approximately, it's about $5,000 difference with the hybrid. Oh, okay. And the reason why the state is doing that $5,000 matching grant 
is because that's the difference to offset from gas to hybrid. Oh, okay. So if we don't get the hybrid, we won't get the grant. So it's going to be the same money anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Councilor Seas. I um, yeah, I was curious if, uh, I, I think I brought this up last year too. Um, have we taken any idea of looking at doing either smaller vehicles or all electric? I, I can Especially that since we're putting in electric, we're supposed to be putting in electric charging facilities in town, mm -hmm. if that's going to happen. I don't know where that, that's Mr. Nice, but. Uh, right, Mr. Chief. I, I'm, as far as the electric, I would love to go all electric today. Uh, but right now, Ford, it's, just, it's not cost doable for us. Maybe next year, we're hearing some rumors in the law enforcement community they're going to have a fully electric police vehicle within another year or two. I would do that mm -hmm. if it's cost effective mm -hmm. for the community. The size, we can't go any less. We have cages in these, we have mm -hmm. transport prisoners. We have rifles, we have equipment, we have a bunch of other equipment, uh, CPR, you know, everything you can possibly imagine, uh, wheels to measure accidents, cruiser bags, uh, so many different components. We couldn't go to a small vehicle. Even the sedans that they have, the intercept sedans, they're too small, you can't fit them. When you put a cage in them, it takes, it shrinks all the space. The cages, it's kind of awkward, you can't get prisoners in and out. The interceptor, the SUVs are the best. It's, my opinion, and it's pretty much a standard in the industry. No one really goes to smaller cars unless they're larger departments where they have funding in place to go electric and they use it for community vehicles. They go out, they park them, they leave them on Main Street foot patrols. Ours are in service operating every day, transporting people every single day, so we need a bigger, a little bit bigger vehicle. The other point that we, we've looked at is that with the all electric technology right now, they don't support our mobile radios, computer systems and things at this point. They have to run off the 12 volt system, not the vehicle system. So they haven't gotten through those things yet. All set. I know um, it's, I have said this for a number of years, um, and the chief has said it. it re two is not enough, really, we should be replacing about three a year, correct? Yes. So it, it, it still continues to be my position that we need to be replacing them at a quicker rate and finding a way to do so. One in the budget, two in the capital, ultimately. Um, optimally, in my opinion. That, that's just all I have to say on that. Any other discussions on the police budget? Or the police capital budget? Mm -hmm. it's Councilor Marchetti. So my only, my only opinion is if there's, if there's nothing wrong with the vehicles, then I don't see anything wrong with them. Continuing to, to use them, uh, but I, if you're going to get the vehicles, you're going to get the vehicles. I'm sure the council's going to go along with it. I just I look at it and say, you know, if they're still drivable, then keep driving them. Uh, the other thing I wanted to know about was the pavement. Eighty thousand dollars. You you planning on doing what? Complete paving of the whole thing? Yeah, for you, Madam Chair, the, the, the parking lot, if you look behind our building, it's like cut in half. We would only be doing one half of that parking lot. And even now, with the uh, recent events uh, in Europe, asphalt's gone sky high, so I don't even know if this is going to cover it anymore. Um, I've gotten a, I got a few prices or quotes, I should say, estimates prior to this submission, but I don't know what that's going to be when I try to get it, you know, after July 1st. If this is approved. I have to come back to the council, talk to the management, see what's going on. But, I love price view, it's for half that parking lot. It went into 1997, you can see from the pictures. You know, come down and take a look, it's getting a little spotty back there. Especially in the winter, when the, the plow will get ice in them, we fill them, DPW's been kind of enough to fill them for us. But they, you know, there's just so much traffic on it that they, that just breaks away quickly. You should see my screen. I was gonna say, I shouldn't <laughs> even say potholes in this community. <laughs> That's all I have, thank you. This summer, there's swimming pools. Are there any other questions about the police budget? Seeing none, we will move on to the fire capital budget. Um, do we have any questions about the fire capital budget? Council Marchetti. Thank you. Through you. Uh, so first of all, the administrative vehicle. That's mm -hmm. not about. So as you know, I all come prepared. <laughs> give you a little description of all of the, the projects that I have listed here for this year only. Um, Thank you. Obviously, the previous, the next couple of years, you can uh, we can talk about those. But all all, all those, those are very large purchase items. Uh, and, uh, not that we could share the rest of them. Uh, but 
pretty much this is. Uh, so they, definitely the uh, administration vehicles have always been a topic uh, when we go to get one. Um, each of the vehicles that we have, uh, mine was replaced in 2020. Um, so we're a good 10 to 12 years before having to replace that one. This one that I have budgeted for right now is for uh, replacement of the 2003-13 uh, Expedition. Uh, it has 90,000 miles on it. Um, as you see in the descriptions, I don't want to go through the whole thing. It gives you a few minutes to uh, read it, but like uh, Chief Woodson said, uh, these vehicles carry uh, multiple two, uh, things for the fire department. Uh, CBA for the fire firefighter that's uh, assigned to that vehicle, fire extinguishers, thermal imagers, gas detectors. Uh, it has multiple radios for a command post. It has uh, vests for it to identify all the roles that are needed at a, at a building fire or an incident. Um, you know, command vehicles nowadays are are, are at the scene to be the, the incident command post for accountability. It also brings in um, the town manager and counselors. That's the place that we all rally when there's a situation that has to be discussed, which we've done before. Um, it also does have some first aid kits. Um, you know, so this is a universal vehicle that uh, it, it functions for us every day as our office. Uh, we use this all the time. And any incident, it's the incident command structure set up for a fire incident or, or an EMS incident. And it's usually generated and run out of the vehicle. Um, the reason this is so, you, like I said, the 2013 was what we talked about. The, this, the first one, I mean, the one that we're replacing right now is, is, is being requested. Um, we've had a great deal of change in our fire department operation. Uh, we've talked this over the years, several years, is that um, when we had a serious cardiac case, uh, the ambulance would go out and would send the fire truck. Uh, the fire truck was getting some wear and tear going to the calls, uh, so we decided that we we're going to start sending the service truck that we have in, in the, that you're probably all seeing around town following the ambulance. Uh, the service truck is a, 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 a grant vehicle that we got a few years that I got a few years back. Um, it's a dual wheel, doesn't move very quickly, it doesn't get around town too much, um, and it does follow up the uh, the ambulance and other calls that need to be. Uh, you know, with extra staff instead of sending the fire truck down the road. Um, we just had a road, the DPW parking lot just fell through the other day. I literally, a week before, had the ladder truck parked right in that exact spot, the brand new ladder truck. So these trucks are heavy, and the reason why I'm, I'd like to take this 2013 vehicle, do a little rehab to it, keep it on the road for another three or four years, stop using this service truck. The service truck is also getting beat. Um, it, it's, it's not a real good functional uh, vehicle for a swift and, and rapid response for the responders. Um, so this vehicle will be, uh, you know, like I said, repurposed. And uh, Councilor Marquette, you said repurposing vehicles. This is a perfect opportunity to move a vehicle in that's got some mileage on it. Uh, it can be used by our staff, and it can be repurposed to do what uh, the task that it needs to do right now. Um, I think it's a good opportunity to do this. Uh, when I put this together, this was quoted out as a Tahoe, as you see in the picture. Um, and Chief Woodson already, uh, he, still, uh, he already elaborated about the $5,000 reimbursement that we can get. Where we've actually calculated um, for just a, a little bit more money um, on top, we can get an F-150 hybrid. Same time frame of delivery, same kind of idea. The five years, I mean, the $5,000 would come off the cost of that. It would be closer to um, $58,232. Uh, the reason I bring that to you now is that, in, like Shane did too, also, Chief was also, is we just got final confirmation that that, um, that was, we were able to do that grant uh, <coughs> process and to get that $5,000 back per vehicle. Um, the deputy does have a comparison of fuel costs. <laughs> we have a calculator. Um, and the differences between the Tahoe, Thank you. the 150, and uh, unfortunately the uh, 2013 Ford Expedition is, is, is still be used, like I said, and that's what this, the purpose of, the, of getting the new vehicle is. So at this point right now, my, my request is to go with the 150, get the $5,000 back, um, and then repurpose the Ford Expedition to, uh, to, the, to the guys so they can respond on uh, emergency calls without taking the fire truck to uh, heavy duty, you know, vehicle to a, to a, to a car, car accident and things like that. So, 
Uh, that's a lot of information. I think the description is a little bit, uh, my written description is, is a little bit more information that you might need, and there's some more pictures in there as we get through through the other three items that we have in uh, this year's budget. Uh, I'm open for any answers, or questions, or answers. Uh, I can do the answers. But the vehicle that you're replacing just needs some body work? Needs. Uh, it needs about $3,000 worth of body work. Uh, the suspension will have to be gone through because it's uh, it's actually 92,000 miles and there's about 4,700 hours on the vehicle. Um, and then uh, I've, I've noticed that the uh, catalytic converter is clinking now, so yeah. that'll probably have to be done yeah. as well. Right. Uh, well, I'm going to ask questions on this item. Then we'll keep going. You can go through all of <coughs> them. And the... the the forest truck? The dastardy forest fire truck that we've pushed and talked about so many times. All right, so tonight, the old one that we're, we have is a 1971 that we pretty much built way back in the day. It's a standard shift. Um, I think there's six or seven people that can drive the vehicle, uh, including the deputy and myself. We're there during the day. So there's five other people within the department that can, can drive this vehicle, that old vehicle. Um, Dear to probably a lot of people's hearts, I know this video is going to be is, is going to be airing, but uh, we have a I don't know how old the Willys. This is a Willys Jeep, 53, 53 Willys Jeep. Um, and with this purchase, with this new Ford Fire Truck, I want to roll in the Willys, the cost of the Willys, and uh, the money that we get for the Willys and the 71 towards the, the price of this new vehicle. Uh, that that has happened before. We just bought the uh, the inspector's vehicle. Um, with uh, some insurance re proceeds that we had. We also had a return of some medical equipment. So we, we took the money out of the capital or stabilization where we got the money from, and then it went that the money when we received it from those things went back into the general fund. Uh, we, we do that a lot with the fire department stuff. It's, it's, you know, we try to find every option to replace vehicles to make sure that we have safe, adequate vehicles. Uh, the new vehicle is an F450. Uh, and it's, it's on, the pricing is right on, on your sheets right there. It has a skid unit in the back, which actually has a hose and a little water tank and a foam tank and a pump. Um, this is very similar to what I've proposed over the last couple of years. Um, and, and that is the number that comes with it. But I recall uh, at the PPP meeting, you said you couldn't get firemen, firefighters to come back. And even if there was a forest fire, you wouldn't even have any to come back and run this truck to get it out to the forest fire. That's what I recall you saying. There are times when we don't have that coming back, but we still need to have uh, safe vehicles that we can drive if there is an incident and we don't have to wait for someone from another town to come. <coughs> you have a lot of incidences with a bush truck? A brush truck. Brush brush. Truck, sorry. Forest fire truck. Yes, we do. Yeah. Right. Do we have any other questions? Citizen Member Clemens. Sure, I'll pay devil's advocate. Um, about how many times a year do you think you need to use that vehicle? So this is brush fire season. We've had uh, four or five, probably five reported brush fires, a lot of illegal burns. So that brush fire does go to these illegal people decide to stop burning mm -hmm. brush in their backyard without a permit. Mm -hmm. So, so they go over there and take care of those. Mulch fires, we have mulch fires. Mulch does spontaneous combust. That brush truck is a very nice vehicle to bring it, bring it through and put the fire out. And it, we do use that on very small incidents also. So it's just, just because it says brush forestry truck, it is kind of a universal vehicle and we do use it more often than, you, than, than everybody thinks. And where did I just forget? And there are some pretty nice pictures of the old vehicles in the, in the back itself. <laughs> If we get down that road and we can sell them by surplus, that would be awesome. So once again, though, if I can finish, um, I should find the information. Semi-custom. Semi-custom to fit in the building again. Semi-custom for what reason? I'll say that, and then before you answer that, I'm sorry. If you can't teach grown men <laughs> to drive a standard, something is wrong. We may have to have a talk. Thank okay. You come down again and show them. You don't give them an alternative. You want a job, you know how to drive the equipment. 
I could say that about the fire department and about the DPW department. Point, so. point of clarification. <laughs> They'll burn the clutch out and we don't know where the parts are going to come from mm -hmm. or if we could even get them. They train them right. <laughs> I learned at 16, grown men should be able to do it. Really? We had Train to. On a non we could not get a truck. license without getting, without doing with a stick. Just saying that's. I wouldn't use that as a as a reason for getting the truck. So could you, if you could just answer the semi custom. I, I guess, Did I miss that? So semi custom and the fact that we're taking a uh, basically a fleet vehicle and adding the pump chassis to it. Okay. And right. That's the customized part of it, and then it would also have what they call a super single rear axle so the truck would originally come as a dual wheeled vehicle they take those off and they put larger off-road tires in its place okay and uh, one I think final question since you brought up the dual wheels you mentioned the other vehicle that you've been using um, sorry I, <laughs> you mentioned that about that was a grant vehicle that was a grant vehicle that you had to take that vehicle or that was a vehicle that you all picked because I thought I remembered the, the vehicle's original purpose, it was designed as a tow vehicle, the, the current service truck. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the reason it's a regional homeland vehicle is because it was meant to tow uh, the various trailers that we have, including the, uh, the district has a safe trailer that has mm -hmm. that uh, we've had in the common many times mm -hmm. with the uh, fire prevention house and things like that. So. It's, meant, it's designed as a tow vehicle, not necessarily as a response vehicle. It does fill that role not well. Okay. I guess I was just, because you're using that as an example of logic to get to do what you needed to get here, it bothered me because you talked about it being a grant vehicle, so you had some sort of option when you purchased that as to what type of vehicle to get, I assume, and so you chose that, so I guess you're just saying, you yeah. know. Right, or did you have to take that vehicle? Point of clarification: the, 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 the vehicle I actually put that grant together right. five, six years. I remember. Ago. I remember when that happened. So right? I just couldn't remember that. That was that vehicle was was purchased through Homeland for exactly what the deputy just said to include the MCI trailer that we mm -hmm. house. We also have an MDU that goes at the hospital. So that vehicle is was tasked for that. Okay. It's not for like like he said. It's not for quick responses every right. single day in and out. It so mm -hmm. wasn't built to do. Okay, I just wanted to be clear though that people realize you've got a vehicle because it sounded like you got a vehicle on a grant that in the end wasn't for what it was, but now you've explained for what it was mm -hmm. and why we have it, why we put it on our insurance rolls, so to speak, you know, and all that, why we pay for it, maintenance and the upkeep of a vehicle because we need it for something else. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> spend the money, I suppose. Do we have um, any other questions or comments from the minister? Seeing none. All right, we'll go on to the next one. De under the DPW engineering, we will go to vehicles. Anybody have a question about vehicles for DPW? Council Marchetti. Uh, so you are replacing quite a few vehicles here. Um, so there's quite a few vehicles listed there, and because we about well, there's four you decided to replace. Six, seven years, we've been trying to ro do a rotation of our vehicles, and every year, not all the vehicles that are on the rotation get pushed. So, as you're seeing, this list is growing and growing and growing because even if you do a schedule of, replace of replacement, if you don't replace all the vehicles you're scheduling, then they get pushed from year to year to year. Um, so, if I know that a certain number of these vehicles have been selected, so I, I don't, I, I guess you put them on the list. We don't ever expect that every single one of them will be funded, but obviously we don't want to forget that they do need to be replaced because they're already at their useful lives and already at high miles. Mm -hmm. So well, just going one at a time, uh, the first one, is there something wrong with the truck that needs to be replaced or is it just another one of those we, we should I will tell you that probably every single one of those dump trucks, the big ones, have broken down at various times and made them not useful for what they were actually scheduled to do. So we can keep on replacing and repairing 1987 back trucks and never get a new one and have it break and have it not be, used, be able to be used for half of the year and have it cost us tens of thousands of dollars trying to replace it and having our mechanics work on it 
or we can decide that it's time to replace them. And just a uh, question through you, Madam Chair. To didn't during plowing season, oftentimes you'd give me updates during the course of the night and the plow trucks were breaking down? Multiple times we had multiple trucks break down. Even though we only had four storms, I think every storm we were losing big vehicles, small vehicles. Every storm we were rotating out vehicles that we were losing. So that meant one more truck that normally was plowed in was off and we had to replace it with either a smaller vehicle or replace it with a backup which was even older and maybe not as reliable. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any more you going one by one for your vehicles? Do you have any others you want to go through, Councillor? Or? Uh, no, I guess not. Okay. Great. Right, so member comments. All right, a couple things. Uh, how do you make the determination of which vehicles you choose to put on the list for for replacement in a given year? So it's um, a combination of things. We're looking at the age, the miles, how many times it's been broken down. I also consult with the crew to find out what they wanted to prioritize. I sent my priorities into the town manager and Karen. Shaking your head. Mm, I am. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right, so age, miles, um, break, uh, history, and crew, and then you talk to obviously what. Okay. Uh, and. But and each of these vehicles that are on this, they all pass inspection yearly anyway, right? I mean, we've managed to pass inspection and keep them on the road. Just yes. curious. Okay. And what's the other thing I want to ask about that? Hmm. I guess I would beg to differ uh, on the evaluation. But um, okay, that's all I got for now. Well, I, might, I would like to follow up, though. Council right. McKay. So what you're saying is that you, you've got uh, one, two, three, four vehicles here, and you're, you're saying every single one of them have all broken down this, this past week? Well, one of, the clamshell is not a vehicle. The clamshell mm -hmm. is an additional piece of equipment okay. for an existing truck all right. to make sure so that we can empty catch basins because okay. we're having problems with our existing clamshell. Right. Um, the Oshkosh is um, 46 is one of our spreaders it's a machine that we have that we only use during big storms or for salting we want to replace it with a more usable vehicle for salting and plowing because it's actually so oversized that we really it's not a vehicle that is practical to be used on our roads the way we're doing them nowadays um, so that's 46. Um, the sweeper is actually replacing of our sweeper so that's not that's a 19 96 sweeper it barely runs and we've actually been trying to get it up and operational all it's it's been down there since last fall and it's still not operational we're still having problems we have problems getting the parts now we have problems getting it operational so we only have one sweeper out right now because we don't have our second sweeper sweepers in the industry they say they should be rotated out every seven years our new sweeper is older than that so at some point you're wasting your time and effort and money, and you're not getting the service that you want with a piece of equipment that's just sitting there. So it's time to replace it. And then you have your, and then we're asking about replacing two trucks that we have, number six and number nine, for one truck that can function that the two trucks have. We're trying to basically get rid of two of our older trucks and get one truck that we can rely on. Okay. Uh, but I thought you said that they were broken down. Well, they break down and we fix them because okay. <laughs> we still have to use them. We can't just the two dump trucks. Well, I, I I don't have a list of all the breakdowns we had right here in front of me over the winter, but yes, these these are two of our older trucks that we've been having problems with. Okay. Say some other comments. Great. So as a follow-up, um, and this has been discussed for years, and I was actually glad to see it when I went through the um, all the equipment that was that was listed in here. Clearly, you're not asking for all the equipment that's in here. Um, but when you talk about the Elgin Pelican Street Sweeper, and um, we talk about not have not yet been able to get reliable pricing for street sweeping services in order to estimate the cost difference. We have talked for years, or we did talk for years, um, or suggested, or whatever, comment made about um, 
about doing just that. Mm -hmm. Other communities do that. Oh, I know we're a little different, but it doesn't mean we can't do what other communities do occasionally too. Um, and so we haven't been able to get, but certainly other communities are getting this, so maybe you know, that the more emphasis needs to be put on that because I remember when we bought that one in 2011 or whatever, the other sweeper, 11, nine, 11, that, 11 right. Um, and that was a big deal purchase going to last forever. And at the time, again, you had the old one breaking down, costing a lot of money. But when I do the math and you come up with how much a street sweeper costs in the years and all that, I don't know, sometimes getting a service who's going to be responsible for the upkeep, the repair, because I remember actually one of them maybe it was the new one, it kept breaking down. We kept having trouble at one point with, with the service on, on something. And I was very frustrated personally hearing every time something was broken when it was purchased to not break down and not have to rent one or use something. So I guess I go back to the point. Why are we not um, putting more emphasis then on finding out what the cost could be on, um, on, on, on making somebody else do the job instead of us? I don't know. So most of thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Most of the services that we were able to find in locations that we were able to find um, either didn't want to give any more prices out because they were already up too booked up, or mm -hmm. like a lot of the places in where, that are using or have services are closer into Boston and didn't want to come out this far. So we really had a hard time finding. And at some point, you know, we had to move on and try to basically move on to doing other projects. So we did and attempt to find it and we can, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I just, I don't know if you want to put up an RFP. That's basically the only way you're going to get anybody to respond. We haven't gone that far. Mm -hmm. um, that, that even takes a lot of time and effort on mm -hmm. our part, so, you know, to put that, that effort in, so. Oh, the cost of a street sweeper is... 300000 $300,000. But you had, you've had even your 2011 now for 10 years. It's $30,000 a year plus maintenance. But I do, like I said, it's, I do... It's going to be $100,000 a year. So, and the, but but that's one. It's 600000 for two. And so, again, you do the... How many men does it, you know, you require that one man to drive each one? You know, how many, how many people does it take off off the rolls because they're doing street sweeping instead of doing all those other projects. And I guess you have to look so at it. Three men the whole when we're thing. doing it with the two sweepers. Right. So three men, two sweepers, you know, if you do the whole thing, even if it were the same, it might just be a better economies of skill not to have that reliability of breakage, rentals, or replacements, whatever, because nothing's no, guaranteed. Uh, so I in know. my opinion, no matter what, you're always going to need one sweeper just to be able to cover when you have those emergencies where something gets dumped or something right. gets happened. Also, you have to remember now, it used to be that we only had to sweep the roads once a year. Now, technically, we're supposed to sweep the roads twice a year. So it is double the effort. So you're looking at two times contract services. Maybe you can handle the one sweeping in the fall easier than having somebody come back in if you had a second, at least having one sweeper. Mm -hmm. Well, Nothing is, is, is beyond needing to know for sure when it comes to numbers and taxpayers' money. So I guess, I've, since we've said it for many years, but we've just never gotten anything out of it, you know, it's like we really should find out what a cost could be. Um, you know, what's a cost going to be? And we can guess at it, we can throw numbers around, but we just, no one's ever produced that. And it's kind of, it's hard to compare apples and apples when you're comparing apples and pears or something. Or, it's Apples and cherries. It's no, hard to get prices when they know you're not really serious about actually awarding yeah. them a contract. Well, I guess mm -hmm. there's other ways to do it. I mean, I once called around to 20 towns and asked what their yeah, snow plowing was. I mean, I did my own thing, but I'm just saying I asked what their overtime was. They were very helpful with telling me stuff. So mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying there, there's got to be a way to know whether it could have worked for us because if it works for other communities. And maybe going out, what about the Springfield way versus the Boston way? I mean, there's, you know, we're in the middle of many opportunities that's all so just it's my suggestion I am a little concerned about um, continually spending money on street sweepers if it's something that should be potentially uh, um, sent out but I could be wrong just all right any other discussion on the vehicles Councillor Steves yes. citizen member Shea just a quick follow-up on what uh, was saying. Um, looking at the Elgin Pelican sweeper um, I know I'm just curious why it, you put down an estimated useful life of 20 years, but it's half that. 
But that's not that's the one. We're the, that's on. not the one. We're looking at the 96 one. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm just curious because that was also in the list of ones seeking to be replaced. Yeah, but it's not being done yet. It's not being funded, so it's not being replaced yet. Okay. It's not even is on the that useful life? That is yeah. an incorrect useful life. It must have been a mistake on the form because that's not true. That's not true. There are only seven year useful life usually. These are new forms too, Gus, so they probably, it was a mistake when it was just a copy. Of that's seven year useful life. Seven. <coughs> Do we have any other questions on the but on Ms. Shea? Um, do you think there's going to be any grants or any help from the state uh, for the um, change in the dealing with our our sewer uh, with our catch, catch basins? No, no we're talking about vehicles right now, Ms. Shea. Oh, no, well, right, let me finish my okay. sentence. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go ahead. That would because now we have to sweep the streets because of the catch basin issue, is the state going to give us any help that we might use towards buying a street sweeper? Um, Hopefully, but not likely. Uh, it, very unlikely, yes. Okay, it, you, you. I mean, I suppose there could be some special grants that you tried to go out, but these requirements are basically for the majority of the communities in the state of Massachusetts, so it, I don't see them, this is not, they don't consider this a new requirement. No. Mm -hmm. Any other further questions on these vehicles? Seeing none. Streets, sidewalks, and drainage. Any questions here? Councilor Marchetti. Thank you for you. The tip construction phase for Hook and Hamilton Street that's that's like been on the list so, now for what 10 20 years now um, well we got on the tip about four years ago mm -hmm. and so we are getting we're scheduled for 2023 that is why this phase of the project is coming up because this is for the right-of-way acquisition you can't do the right-of-way acquisition until it's a year before the project is actually scheduled to be on the tip so we are reaching that and that's why next year you will need to be able to start doing your right away acquisition for your tip project so that it will be ready to go when it gets advertised and, and what about the hamilton street that's that's, that's a whole the, project that's a whole it's project. the hamilton that's the whole rotary tip project is it's all one project all right okay all right thank you Councilor Steves. yeah how much how much um, do you actually think we're going to need as far as land acquisition well, it's, it's actually not that bad as far as the pieces that we have, but it's until you get into the right away, right? That, that is all shown on those right away plans yeah. that were out. There's some temporary ones, even those you have to use the, that right away process. So it's all the little temporary ones because even if you're, when you're doing state jobs, even if you're right, doing a sidewalk next to somebody's property, you get a temporary. Yeah. So if there's multiple ones, it's, it's gonna be a process. Um, you know, when, when that process starts, the community, there's definitely ways to mitigate the cost of those things where if people are willing to donate mm -hmm. for instead of in lieu of the easements and things of that nature. So hopefully, we don't know, this is a budgetary estimate that the engineers provided. Any other questions? Seeing none, we move on to combined water, sewer, drainage, and paving projects. Any questions or comments on this one? Mr. Manager. Madam yeah, Chair, I'm just to give you a, a heads up. Um, this is where I may have inter misinterpreted some of the funding codes. Um, and also we had thought about our, but you will see in the left hand column with the description, um, I copied in some of the, the descriptions from what Ms. Blakely provided me, and I, we were contemplating ARPA at that time. The codes don't necessarily reflect that. One of them does have it, the West Street. Um, so I know Ms. Blakely and Ms. Harlow and I did go over this, and we have a better funding breakdown, but these have multiple funding sources. Um, but some of the funds that are requested may, in light of the new ad hoc ARPA committee, may require us to bond these next three. If, I, if I'm saying that correctly. Yeah, or, or some variation of theirs. Right, depending upon what the 
Uh, the ultimate decision of the ad hoc committee and the council is relative to the remaining $3.6 million of BARPA funds. If, they, um, if a lot more goes to community needs, then we may have to balance what we would like to use for infrastructure versus bonding. So the number isn't clear at this moment. That's all. Right. And I also would like to just pass out because we realize that we somehow mistake when we didn't include Crane and River in a sheet, so I, we have made copies to add to your binders. And there's actually additional backup regarding Crane and River here. That's right. Do it. Add it. Yes, but it's not, there's not a, there's not one of these. Every one of those has one of these associated, so that's a good idea. So if you want to just add that to the back of your binder. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do we have questions or comments from members of the committee? So no? OK. All right. Well, it looks like the next section we actually have any funding in is actually underwater. Because everything else doesn't look like it was funded for this year. So if there's any, unless there's any further discussion, we'll move on to that. All right. So water, any questions or comments on the water capital budget? So I just do have one comment. Yep. I think that this is another one of those situations where we thought we were going to have proper funds. So I think that two, where you see the two first points that mm -hmm. say L, I think those projects are going to probably either be weighted until the ARPA is decided or, you know, or taken off. All right. Okay. So it really is just the two that say H that is contained earnings, which is the polymer a full station and the engineering for that. Is there a way we can get a clean copy of this with all the corrections made or some of the corrections came before it goes up for the final council vote for budget? Because there's a lot of things that are being discussed and changed about this coding. So. We just that page. Mm -hmm. I know, that page alone we had a lot. Um, all right. My only question would be the the downtown water main project that's East Main, East uh, Main Street. Where, 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 where. Water. Oh, where well, that was, um, I think that was <coughs> Main Street. And the Denison Hill water main project, is that going to include some uh, road work, I would imagine? Well, any water main project that we would do is, would obviously include some road work. Right. Um, Which is good, because it needs it. But the downtown water main project, we just finished downtown. So I, I thought possibly. it might be Lower Main Street. It might be a duplicate of the Lower Main Street one, but I'm right. trying to find where the actual sheet is. Too many sheets. Oh, this is the gaps in between. I'm sorry. No. So this is to fill the gaps in between Main Street and mm -hmm. where the tip projects are going. Mm -hmm. So there's Foster Street, Central Street, and Hamilton Street are mm -hmm. going to each have little sections on them that aren't getting upgraded in either one of the projects. And to fill in the two gaps between and make put new water mains in there and to get the roads be done in there, that was what that project is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that what I found. It, sorry. How's that? Which I do think is a very valuable project for you guys to think about and consider in the future because you're going to have these three little roads with these three little segments in between them, and there might be some way you can even incorporate them into the tip. The state probably won't pay for them, but you may be able to do them as part of the project if you had funding for them. Any other questions about water? Seeing none, we'll move on to sewer. Do we have any questions or comments about sewer? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. There's <laughs> nothing about that down there, right? Well, so you can see here that it does say that it's bonded, but I would say that um, I guess it's up to the council to decide if they want to go out for the complete bonding of that at this time or not. But um, I would caution that you have a lot of projects already going on with a new director coming in that yeah. you might want to also temporarily 
let them get up to speed before you you put additional projects on their plate. Right. Right. Any other questions about sewer comments? Seeing none. Uh, the next section with actually any funding is the community center. Because everything else was not funded from what it seems like in fiscal year 23. I just had one thing about that. Okay. About the community center? All right. Okay. I thought we were going to use CDBG money on the community center. I thought that was in the works for possibly the next round of CDBG funds. I never heard that. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, Dean might be able to. CDBG funding at the community center? I thought that was in the works. We were planning. Yeah, I, I, was, uh, I think you advocated for funding to right. go to the community center at a future public hearing. Right. We haven't gone for public hearing for the next potential grant projects right. yet. That's, right. That's how much of a tail there is on okay. this. Okay, all right. I thought we were just keeping that open and possibly and possibly using CDBG money for the community center for the next round because we've used a lot of it in the Street Field and uh, Skateboard Park and so we were saying well, let's for next time because we want to spread it around a little bit we would use it for the community center and more street, uh, street Field. So. Thank you. That's yeah. all. Yes, Ms. Dean? Yeah, uh, just to give you a little teaser about the CDBG timeline just to not create any false expectations. Uh, because we were all so slammed with all of the grant money out there and the projects that we're inundated with, CDBG is looking at a two-year grant cycle uh, that would be later than what traditionally would have started this coming January. So it would be further out, maybe a year and a half from now. And it would be a larger chunk of money. Uh, so we'll have longer to think and plan, uh, bring those ideas to the public hearing, please. All right, thank you. Yeah. Ms. Clements. Thank you. Um, the replace upper windows, exit doors, flashing and caulking. Mm -hmm. Has anybody, because I was involved with the replacement of all the lower window doors in the senior center, mm -hmm. uh, windows, excuse me, um, to which all the caulking turned out to have asbestos. Um, and that became a whole other yeah, um, that's, animal. That, that has been brought to my attention. Okay, so has that been tested since you're gonna, you're talking about doing those upper windows, the Correct. big, the big it, plexis? It has yeah. not been yet. Okay. Um, that's gonna be part of the cost going forward. Um, but they definitely need to be replaced. Pri uh, before the windows though, I'm more concerned with the exterior doors because with the use that they got during the vaccine clinic, they're not closing properly. They're secure, but they're, they're really loose. And um, just security-wise, especially, um, they really need to be replaced. Okay, because it was used as the, um, for the, the center, um, you know, the, the COVID crisis center, the vaccination center and all, could not, maybe there be some sort of could we not use money from something else well, to fix that? I am going to bring Just some curious. of these forward to Opera as well. Right. Um, when we had our Opera meeting, I did mention these yep. things. Okay. Um, yeah. right. yes. Good to know. All right. Um, but I would certainly, I would caution you, you know, you've got a number there that's replace upper windows and, and, and the flashing of the caulking. And I would just caution you because, um, you know, we were disposing of windows, then instead we were abating and disposing. And it's a simple test. Uh, right. You know, we had um, um, G's uh, engineering environmental who came in and, and did the test from Charlton. He was great. And then we lucked out because we had some, um, Casella helped us out with getting rid of the asbestos uh, windows. Okay. So, uh, and, but it had to be done properly. It had to be right. all, you know, and that was one room that wasn't the, the thing. Right. The big room, so I'm just saying. Uh, That's why I had put in the higher mount there. Um, yeah. The quote I got for the windows themselves was um, seventy thousand, but um, I speaking with Heather, she said that we would need to get the abatement done, and she suggested that we go at least double that. So I went to one fifty. Um, what? The price uh, no, it's at one fifteen. This is wrong. Oh, we well, but on my my. That, that was the prior um, year, 
Here, I don't know why my things didn't get changed over, but um. Yeah, because it says one fifteen. One fifteen. So we're okay. back at that issue. Well, again. So you're saying it's one fifty now? Well, yes. It's okay. Only like one fifty. Is that? Yeah. that again, that's you an estimate. That's that's was that the understanding, Mr. Manager? Definite. Does somebody this know about that? May have been a typo on my part. Mm -hmm. 115, 115. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, that's. Um, yeah. Do you have any other questions? Or? Well, no. Well, the simple thing is to first just get the get the little sample test, and then mm -hmm. you'll know right. for sure. Mm -hmm. It might be that they're old, that they're newer, and that it was after the fact. It might not have been as old as the original framed windows that got redone. So. I believe they're original windows, so they probably do have a best. Yeah. And we only had the issue in that main room anyway, not in the side room, so that was good. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions about the community center? Seeing none, we move on to cable. We have one replaced field cameras. That's it. Do we have any questions or comments on that? Just See? always pointing out, Madam Chair, that uh, money comes out of the rate payers, not mm -hmm. out of the taxpayers. So you might be one in both. You might <laughs> obviously be a taxpayer here in Southbridge and subscribe to cable. But the, the cable funding is through the rate payers. So. All right. Yeah, I think we might, we oh. actually may make a change on that. Oh, okay. Because we're running into an issue with our graphics system. I've mentioned it to Karen. Okay. We're having more of a problem with that and a need to re possibly replace that than we are, will have a need to replace the field cameras. Okay. That system is, I don't know if I've noticed at the beginning of meetings, sometimes the wrong signal, the wrong uh, information flashes at the beginning of the meeting. It's, it's an older system. It was, at the time that the uh, control room was upgraded, about five or six years ago, that was still viable and they decided to keep that system. But now it's starting to go. And as I said, especially at the beginning of meetings, it tends to want to act up for some reason. So it's probably going to have to be replaced. So we may go with that replacing that. And it would actually be cheaper okay. than the amount that was quoted. You know, for the cameras, the system that we were quoted is possibly replacing the switcher, you know, the switcher which puts the images on the screen and the graphics combination. And I was told that might run about 13, 12, 13,000. So that would be instead of replacing the field cameras, is what is you're it? saying. Is that instead of or in instead addition? Of. Okay. Yes. So it's yeah, instead of. It's okay. a more immediate need. It's starting, as you said, at the beginning of the meet, you'll be see it. Puts the wrong graphics up occasionally. <laughs> so, Jim, would you not um, prefer to leave leave the number, not knowing that you don't have a quote official quote yet? But also, mm -hmm. what about replacing part of the field cameras? Then, yeah. you know, well, not all of them, just replace a few or something. I mean, you have yeah. the money, and you have the money. In it, so, yeah, we well, may actually do. This is the first I've heard of that. Replace one or two <laughs> field cameras because some of those are getting can, are aging out as well. <laughs> can we have an updated? Um, um, information sheet for the meeting then on that as well because that's a big change and I want everybody to be informed. Thank you. Yeah, we, Lynn and I could possibly work on that next week and get a more accurate amount for that. Because as you said, this latest problem has been uh, really cropping up and we'd like to get get to that maybe in the, you know, when we can, replacing that system. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, Denise has said, maybe a field camera or two, because those are getting a little old, so, you know, we're going to start using them more, because we, you know, mm -hmm. we may we have a new person coming on, so, hopefully yes. you'll get more use, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions or comments about cable? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next section, which is Site conditions, but those then those are all funded through state and federal aid. Any questions or comments about those under the school section site conditions? No. All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to building conditions. Again, there's only it looks like only one thing, and it looks like it's being funded through federal and state aid. Any questions? Right. Um, 
seeing none. I do. Oh, you do? Okay, yes. Councilor Seas. Um, talking about doing these roofing projects here, um, weren't we also talking about much bigger roofing repairs that need to be done as part of their uh, their capital master plan? Yes, but they, I believe if I remember this correctly, they, right? they stated that they're going to be putting that as part of, because they got a huge increase in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in Chapter 70A, they'll be putting it in as part of that instead of coming to the town and asking for it. Right, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, that, was, that was Mr. Villar did a presentation from mm -hmm. the South Beaches Partnership last night, and he had his slides mm -hmm. up. I got the impression that there was a large chunk coming to this town, which is, they're asking... The, no, yeah, the increase in Chapter yeah, 78, yeah, there was yeah. such a huge sure one. Right. There was such like a, a huge increase. Dollars. There was a cup. There was extra money left over right. after net okay. minimum spending, and they're using that increase of Chapter 70 to fund these Correct. capital repairs right. instead of coming to the town and getting it. Right. All right. And, and I believe he's also looking to do a master plan, yeah. mm -hmm. so yes. that he can do an SBA project to get the maximum amount of yep. reimbursement on those. So. Right. right. But they are coming to. The, he talked about coming to the council for the vote on all of that because yes. you still have to to buy into the whole plan, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Right. Any, any other questions? Very good. Oh, yeah, no, I, it's, it was a great presentation. I was quite impressed this year. Um, all right, any other questions about building conditions? <coughs> Seeing none, we move on to building elements. Again, there's only, it looks like only one thing here, and it's funded through state and federal aid, and that is the HVAC upgrades and recommissioning for the school systems. Any questions about that? All right. Seeing none, that concludes all the things that have been identified as being funded for this fiscal year. Are we okay with moving that up to council as presented? Uh, I would just like to ask one question. I'm sure. So, what exactly is the bottom line? This yeah, year? this is okay. yeah. There's a no bottom. Strange budget. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because it says one seven. One one point seven five million, but we didn't fund the full one point seven five. No, that's under school. That's just that's school. school. Oh, that's just a school. So, so it's twenty seven. Yeah. No twenty seven million would have been the total request for this year. Yeah, exactly. right. The actual total funding by source is the nineteen million for the combined water, sewer, school. Oh, right at the bottom, right at the bottom, the grand total section. But we're gonna have to make some minor changes to the things that were mentioned tonight. But it's roughly the one point. And the 19.13 million, uh, subject to the minor amendments like um, um, Ms. Haddock's, I have to fix that 115, mm -hmm. and then I have to remove some of those ARPA related things. So it should not be to exceed that amount, it would probably be reduced. I, I would just eyeball it, I think we'd be taking a million or two off from the ARPA request. Okay. But what I will endeavor to do is make the corrections that you asked for, Madam. Chair to clean it up and send it back to the. Yeah, because I think I, I think I get what you're asking. You're asking yeah. the, it, I think it could all be incorporated under a property tax, free cash, and overlay surplus. Right, a lot of people. That's usually what they'll say. How much is coming out of the free? You so it'd be one point nine, roughly coming out of either. So one point nine, out of uh, what we would be using out of free cash or stabilization, those types of sources. Yes. Are you going to do the stabilization? Uh, what is the stabilization plan that you want to Yeah, that doesn't have that in here. Yeah, that doesn't have more. Where we put money in. Mm. Uh, uh, I'm integrating your, you know, I, I, I just do know how to put, um, we're, we're incorporating as many of the ideas that we talked about as okay. possible. But I do, I do have a, a line over there. I, I have a code for it. We didn't mm -hmm. do it yet. But. All right. I reserve space for it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is very strange. I mean, we really didn't talk about water and sewer. True. Yeah, we went over yeah, water and sewer, and there was no upgrades. Oh, yeah, all right. We went through every single thing, every section that had up actual funded. What an upgrade! Fifteen million. There was no upgrade. No, you. We talked about that. I said that the odor control is the big one that you're seeing. Five million dollar, and if you wanted to not. To Sorry. wait on that, that's your big ticket. You okay. know, everybody wants odor control, but it's... The water and sewer bond is 8.7 million. Nobody has to control. That's a that's the water and sewer bond, that line, water and sewer bond. So that you don't have bad smell every once in a while. That's ridiculous. <laughs> It's, oh, it's very expensive. It's annoying. But right, it's and it doesn't even really smell every day. Yeah. It doesn't even smell every week. It doesn't even smell, you know. What? It smells in it smells so, in Millbury when I stop at the lights. <laughs> Get out there, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. They probably Madam have Chair, uh, <laughs> under the arbitral, I have one point five million. So that number may 
need to be changed downward to take out the projects that um, Ms. Blakely and I had talked about where we, we had initially put the, the placeholder for ARPA and that subject to change. Okay. So she was talking about taking those two out of the water, I think, but at the um, 900,000. So West Street, we had 250,000. I, I think we need to put a detailed presentation of where the funding sources are going to come from for yes. one of those projects yeah. yes. and um, try to talk through it because I don't think that it's feasible for you just to take it all up, out of all your water and sewer. You might want to tap some of your ARPA funds just so that you can keep your rates down. Okay. So we will work on this and I'll send you an amended uh, form. Okay. Can you make sure um, all of the subcommittee members as well get the updated amended capital yes. budget as well? Thanks. Um, Yes, Ms. Collins, you. Well, no, I, I'm still trying to digest this this format, which is very professional and very, you know, it pushes things out, and it's definitely much more than blank years, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which we were used to. However, it just doesn't do that thing where we talk about. Well, you say you're going to talk, you can do the detailed presentation at some point of how you're funding certain things. Usually, it's well, we have to bond that, we have to do that, we have to. You know, or here's all the free cash numbers, and that's well, it. Isn't that what a it is? is I know I circled them all, but if there's no not there's no real. I mean, yes, it's, it looks like one nine if the numbers are right, but we have about a bunch of discrepancies or a few discrepancies. I won't say a bunch. So it's just like it's hard to get the bottom line in this in this mm -hmm. format. Just say it's after after looking at them for twelve years, some really bad ones, some which made no sense for five years. Um, it's just like it's odd. <laughs> it's just odd. It's odd. All right. But anyway, okay, I guess, I mean, because when you're checking about capital projects, the town wants to know, the taxpayers want to know how we're funding. If we're going to have to bond something or take, a, you know, mm -hmm. get funding for it, then they need to know that that's mm -hmm. part of our debt, you know, going forward. It's just hard, it just didn't but seem the, like I mean, we were the general fund fund is not, there is none. That's why we didn't talk about it. Yeah. There was none put forward for this year. Right, but we have these road projects and all that aren't all being taken care of by, but anyway, it's okay. No big deal. It's for me to extract and understand. Any other? Mr. Manager. I'll renew the same uh, comment that I made earlier when we talked about the positions. If anybody wants to mail, email suggestions, you know, that is the, mm -hmm. maybe we should limit it to council and uh, citizen mm -hmm. subcommittee members about the format so that we can have a discussion um, and maybe we still continue to meet with our uh, ad hoc capital planning to discuss how to improve this going forward. But again, this um, incorporated a lot of the discussion we had in this uh, ad hoc committee, and I, I ran a rough draft of this to Council mm -hmm. Martini. So yeah. trying to incorporate what we discussed, and like I said, first pass, we can always improve it. So. I think it's a vast improvement what we were getting previously. It's yeah. a vast improvement. Bigger fun. This is this is a very I hard to committee to please. Just know, I no, everything's done out of line. I have to blow mine up until eleven by seventeen. That's, that, yeah, that's what I would love. <laughs> this Clark had to do that. Right? No, Kevin did it oh, too. Sure. All right. Yeah. Well, the, my my thought process was trying to get out one sheet of paper. Sure. So that no, I don't. I know. I know. Yeah. No, no, I get it. It's not easy. Nothing's easy. It's just it's like oops. Counselor Steves. Yes, just a quick suggestion, and maybe. With this, the, all this, if it, is it a suggestion that could be sent by email or it could be? Because <laughs> I may forget to say it. Let me just say it. Because it's it'll take a second. Um, is it instead of is it, with with this document? Maybe we could just have a cover sheet that just breaks down which which funding source are the ones that, you, that you're actually seeking funding for. Like a single page that lists all the A's, all the B's, all the C's, whatever, just all in one place in type font that we can actually read. I actually, I would disagree with that just because I like being able, if you do and that, you it, we won't be able here. to look. You keep everything else in here, but, but just you just want an additional document. For this, for this, for the first year, for the first year, for the first year, the summary page. Yeah, you can a filter it out. A summary page. Yep. For the first year. <laughs> yes. Just for general. Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody says to you, hey, what would you spend on free cash? Because that's what everybody always says. There it is. Okay, no, that's good. But for everybody else who needs six years, there it is. Exactly. Okay. All right, so we have any further discussion on the capital budget for fiscal year 23 as presented? All right, we do have a motion and a second to recommend to forward this to council. All those in favor? I have Lulu on that street sweeper. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll pull them all. All right. 
Fair. All those opposed? <laughs> Unanimous of all present. We're on the last agenda item, adjournment. So, so moved. moved. Exactly. All right, all those in favor. Long discussion, long Great. discussion. Good night, everybody. Meeting is adjourned.